in the same exact way that we can use ray diagrams to locate the position and location of our images produced by mirrors, we can use ray diagrams to find where our images that is produced by thin lenses, by convex and concave thin lenses. Now before we describe how to properly draw the ray diagram for thin lenses, we must make the following assumption. So our rays of light for lenses actually bend at two locations, at the front surface of our lens and at the back surface of the lens. But for assumption purposes, whenever drawing the ray diagram, we depict the bending or refracting of light taking place at a center line instead of at each surface of the thin lens. So in reality, any time light hits the following lens or this lens, it bends at the first surface as well as at the second surface. But whenever we're drawing ray diagrams, we're making the assumption that all the refraction, all the bending is taking place at a line known as the center line. So in these two diagrams, the center line is drawn by the following brown dashed line. It essentially cuts our lens into two pieces. So let's begin by examining convex lenses. Convex lenses, also known as converging lenses because they converge light, are essentially thicker at the center and thinner at our edges as shown by the following double convex thin lens. So this black line is our principal axis. It cuts our lens essentially in half. So the principal axis goes through the center of our lens and it is perpendicular to both surfaces of our double convex thin lens. Let's suppose we take our object and we place the object to the left of the following convex lens. So, unlike mirrors, lenses have two focal points. We have a focal point found on the right side and the focal point found on the left side. So this focal point is known as F and this focal point is known as F prime. So let's suppose we take the object and we place it to the left of F prime and we call our object simply O. So this arrow, this uh, red arrow represents the height of our object. So let's begin drawing our rays. So ray number one. So ray number one essentially begins at the tip of our object and that tip is known as the object point. So the first ray begins at the object point and is drawn parallel with respect to our principal axis. Now eventually when it hits the center line it will refract, it will bend because our lens is usually made from glass or plastic and glass or plastic has a different index of refraction than air. So bending will take place and our ray, because initially it was parallel with respect to our axis, it will bend and it will go directly through our focal point F found on the right side of our lens as shown by the following ray. So this is ray number one. Now, let's move on to ray number two. The second ray begins at the same exact point on the object known as the object point. So it begins at this point and now instead of being parallel, it goes directly through the focal point F1 found on the left side of our lens. So it follows the following straight path. Eventually, when it hits the center line, it will refract and it will bend in such a way that our refracted ray or bended ray essentially is parallel to our principal axis as shown by the following ray. So the second ray is drawn so that it passes through the focal point found on the left side of the lens, namely 
focal point F1. The refracted ray, as shown in this diagram, is parallel to our principal axis. So now we look at the position where our two rays of light intersect. That position, that point, is known as the image point. And that point represents the tip of our image. So this arrow, this purple arrow, represents our image. And notice it's upside down. So that basically means it is inverted. Now, because the rays of light actually pass through our image, that means the image will be a real image. Remember, a real image is defined as an image through which our rays of light actually pass. And if we place a projection screen right behind these rays of light in this position, the projection screen will show our image. So, if we place a viewer, if we place a person right at this position, when the rays of light reach the eye of the person, the brain will interpret that image. So, the person will see that image. So, once again, placing the object behind the focal point F1 on the left of the following point, forms a real image that is inverted and the image is found on the right side on the opposite side of our lens now if we wanted to we can also draw a third ray so a third ray can be used as a way to confirm or check the position of our image it travels directly through the center so if we wanted to we can also draw a third beginning at our tip of our object once again known as the object point goes directly through the center and continues and eventually it will pass through the same exact point so usually we only draw ray number one and ray number two these two rays will give us the position of our image the third ray can be used as a way to check that that's actually correct so, now let's move on to concave lenses, also known as diverging lenses because they diverge light instead of converge. Now, concave lenses are thinner at the center and thicker at the edges, and that's exactly why our light converge or diverges instead of converges. So, essentially, we have to follow the same exact procedure. So, let's begin with ray number number one. So incident ray number one is parallel with respect to our axis as is ray number one in this diagram. So it's parallel. It begins on the tip of our object known as the object point. Eventually when it hits the center line it will refract and it will travel in the following direction diverging. So incident ray parallel to axis refracts and does not actually pass through our focal point F as it does in this case. Instead, it seems to pass through focal point F1. So when our ray refracts, if we extend the following ray backward by using the following dashed line, this will actually go through our point F1. Now, ray number two, let's examine ray number two. So, the second ray is directed towards focal point F. So focal point F lies here. We begin at the same exact object point and we point our arrow at our focal point F. However, when it travels and hits the following center line, it will refract and the refracted ray will essentially travel parallel with respect to our principal axis. So when it travels this way, we extend our dashed line directly backward along the same axis as this actual ray of light and at the position where these two dashed 
our lines intersect, that represents the position of our image point. So this purple arrow represents our image. This red arrow represents our actual object. Now, if we wanted to, we can also draw the third ray, and the third ray will confirm that the image is in fact in this position. So we see that placing our object behind our focal point F1, so to the left of our focal point found on the left of our concave lens, creates a virtual image that is upright. So it's virtual because by definition, a virtual image is an image through which our rays of light do not actually pass. So if we place a person on this side, the person will still see our image because the human eye cannot differentiate between virtual and real images. But if we place a projection screen on this position, the image will not appear on the projection screen because this is a virtual image. The rays of light actually travel in these directions. The rays of light do not travel through our image point.